right, good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon session. Joining me, uh, friendly folks from the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. I have Osman and Tressa that are gonna be your presenters this afternoon. I am Adria Spoon. I am gonna serve as the moderator and just wanna say welcome. So glad that you're here today. Glad that you've taken the opportunity to spend some time this afternoon and learn more about this option that you can uh, consider as, as a great opportunity after you graduate from high school. So uh, this is gonna be a 45 minute session. There is an ability to ask questions of the two of them. And so please use the Q and A button that's at the bottom of your screen to pop in that question. We also uh, will make sure that we need to be finished up and, and done at that 2.45 timeframe. So I know that they have a lot of information to cover and are happy and willing to answer any questions that you may have. I also wanna provide a reminder that today is being recorded. So if you'd like to follow up and, and listen again to the great information that they're sharing or learn how to reach out to them after today, this presentation is gonna be found on the OACAC org website and you can connect with them again. So I think I've done what I need to do with the introductions. Osman, Tressa, take it away and thanks for being here today. All right, thank you. Thank you. So let me share my screen. All right, I will get started here. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, my name is Osman Ori. I'm an admissions rep for Pennsylvania College of Art and Design along with Tressa here as my colleague, um, and also an alum and working artist at the school. Um, so if you have any questions about the student experience, um, my time at the school, anything like that during the presentation, feel free to type that in the Q&A box. Um, but the overall presentation um, is gonna give you essentially an overview of what the school has to offer, um, its five majors, and some of the new components that are coming next fall of, fall of 2021. Forward. Um, so our motto with the school is seeing differently. Um, what we mean by that is teaching our students to create and influence through adaptive thinking, effective making, and, and creating an articulate voice while in the school. Uh, we also try and cultivate that experience um, while they're in the school as well and outside of the school once they're done with their careers um, going to the school. Uh, just some quick facts about us. Uh, we were founded in 1982, a rel relatively young school. Uh, we were founded by artists for artists in Marietta, PA, and then eventually migrated to Lancaster. Um, you get your bachelor's in fine arts degree when coming to the school, uh, which is your BFA. Um, any of the five majors listed here, uh, we have animation and gaming art, fine art, craft design, illustration, photography, and video. And then our newest major coming next year would be live entertainment and experience design. And I'll get more into that once I get to the slide. Um, we'd like to consider ourselves a micro college. Um, just, just, that's just under a total enrollment of 300 at any given time. Uh, we usually average about 250 to 275 students at capacity. Um, and as I said before, we are located in downtown Lancaster. Um, in accordance with you guys in Ohio, um, we're probably about seven hours away. Uh, Pittsburgh is about four hours away to give you guys an estimate of how far we are away from you. So one thing you'll hear me mention a lot and it, what we'll be mentioned in the next slide as well, um, student teacher ratio and personalized experience coming into the school. Um, student teacher ratio is about 10 to one, uh, can range from 10 to 12 students per class to one teacher. Um, that lends itself to the personalized experience we like to give a lot of our students, a lot of the personal attention we like to give our students. Um, and, and it gives us that, gives the students that flexibility of being able to talk to their teachers at any given time, talk to staff, or even talk to their president if they want to um, within that small tight-knit environment we like to create in the school. Uh, we do have state-of-the-art technology when it, come, when it comes to the school. This is typically what one of your classrooms may look like. Um, and this is our example of our digital um, anim our animation and gaming art major, I should say. Um, this is the Cintiq lab where a lot of the animation and gaming art majors hang out or the illustrators at times, depending on what they're working on, um, whether it's digital, uh, digital conventional uh, pieces or it's more traditional pieces they're working on with like handmade manual tools. Uh, we do have other, other facilities. Um, where we have a wood fully um, designed wood shop in, in, on a third floor of our building. We also have a printmaking lab um, as well as a design lab uh, that's usually used for senior, senior graphic designers and senior, senior photographers and fine artists in that space. Um, one thing we do like to mention is that we don't only just teach art. Um, about 35% of their courses are usually liberal arts courses, and these, those can usually take place before and after your major studio courses. 
Um, and those can be in any range, from, you know, math, science, um, intro to European art, art, art history, things like that. Um, but that'll be about 35% of your classes. That also, um, we also like to have our students be strong communicators, hence why we have those liberal arts courses. Um, we want our students to be able to talk about their work, not only visually, but be able to verbally talk, speak about their work and present their work in a fashionable sense um, where it makes sense to them and the people they're presenting it to. Uh, one stat we like to point out there, 95% uh, of our PCAD students are usually employed or within graduate school within a year um, of graduating from the campus. Uh, we chalk that up to a lot of our personalized support and exposure that we do have at the campus. Uh, we do have an online uh, campus and on-campus career advisor um, and advising center. Um, it, usually he helps students find their classes or find, uh, manage um, courses, or not courses, uh, careers while they're in the school. Um, we also have professional practices courses. Usually those come up within your junior and senior years where you get into more branding, building a website, doing a lot of stuff on your own as far as branding yourself and getting yourself out there. Um, we also have senior year, which is a, a whole large senior experience where students are more independent. They're doing a lot of their own work. Um, the teachers turn into more guidance rather than teachers. Um, you're kind of all on your own and creating that experience for yourself. And this all leads up to senior show and celebration, which is a huge marketing opportunity for a lot of our students. Um, the building, the whole building turns into an art gallery and a lot of the students get to talk about their work and show off their skills that they've culminated within the four years of being at the school. Um, and it's, it's over three days. Uh, you usually have your, you graduate in the morning, have your senior show at night, and then over that weekend, you usually have uh, more public opportunities for people to come in um, and talk to them about your work and you be there to help guide them through your process. So, um, and also a number of different PCAT events um, that also help with that personalized support and exposure, as I said before. Uh, one I'd like to point out is Designathon, uh, where we bring in local businesses, um, where, where graphic design, it's, it's mostly a graphic design event, but it's open to all their majors. Um, and usually uh, local businesses come in, pitch their ideas to these, these six or seven groups. Um, and then once you um, stay in the school for 24 hours, when you're all groggy and tired, you essentially present your, present your um, work to those um, businesses again. Um, and whoever ends up winning the, that jury competition or whichever group has the best pitch, um, they end up getting their marketing materials out into the world um, for that local business or firm. Uh, we also have 24 hour comic, uh, it's not 24 hours, uh, comic days, student led art markets, career, uh, career days, which uh, our career advisor brings in local businesses and national businesses um, that talk about their career paths and uh, just bring in a number of different trades that students could go into after college. Um, and then we also have visiting artists and lectures um, where we have visiting artists obviously come in, give a lecture, um, and then go in their respective uh, field or major and talk to those students and critique their work. And also talk about their experience and what students can improve on or where they can go. Um, lastly, um, we do have networking, networking excursions, I can't talk, uh, networking excursions uh, regarding the pub crawl, which is almost like a little mini workshop set up around New York um, in different pubs for illustrators. And then a LuxCon, which is like a comic con for illustrators. Um, that's also very cool. Um, and then lastly, our Chinese photography festival in Pingyao, China, something that's been going on for the last two years, I should say, since 2018. That's headed up by our photography department chair, Eric Weeks. And he brings together a number of different institutions as well as PCAD to uh, source uh, photographs and set up this exhibition for a number of different um, place institutions in China. And we have had students go there and actually be a part of the show and show their work there as well. So. And then these, uh, following up with the personal, uh, personal uh, pr business development things that we like to talk about. Um, these are some of the places that some of our students have gone on to work for. Uh, last week, we had one of our alums actually talk about his experience dealing with Nickelodeon. Um, and now he's working for Netflix and all that. Um, but these are just some of the places that we have had students either intern at um, or go to work for in a massive capacity. Uh, one place I do like to point out is a local business, um, Curio Gallery and Sketch Club. Uh, I do like to point these people out because they are two alums of the college. Um, Matthew Chapman and Nicole Duquette are graduates of, o of the 08 class. Um, and they started their business about a year ago. Um, so they have a gallery, uh, gallery space, a uh, studio space for um, materials for students and things like that. And they also run sketch clubs um, every week. Um, but they also bring that into the classroom as Matthew is one of the teachers um, in, the, in the drawing one year with foundation. Um, he's bringing his experience as a gallery owner, an artist, and a painter as well 
um, into that space and teaching a lot of our students what he knows um, while being out of school and just bringing it into the classroom. Um, then these, these are just some examples of some of the work that some of the staff may bring. Um, Julius Tables is one of our photography department heads. Uh, Caitlin Bishop, I can't really see, sorry about that. Um, Caitlin Bishop is one of our fine art teachers. And then moving forward, uh, we have Tom Newmaster who works on packaging and design within the graphic design department. Um, Becky Blosser is one of our um, printmaking heads and one of our chairs um, as far as the fine art department goes. And then Norma and Johan Klinger we usually work within the illustration, animation, and gaming art majors. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I like to thank uh, Mike Hawthorne as well. Um, he's working with Marvel and all the experience that he has within those within those uh, illustration elements as well. Um, I like to think that all these teachers and, and uh, staff, or I should say faculty, bring a lot of different experiences. Um, whether you're working on animation, game art, or illustration, or photography, or, or printmaking, they all bring invaluable resources into the program. And our students having that ability to be able to talk to them all the time and not have to schedule amongst 40,000 other students, um, it's really, really invaluable that our students are able to just do that, be able to speak their mind and get all that juicy information out from their heads that they've learned over the years. So moving on, um, as I said, we are a little bit away away from where you guys are at. Um, but we do have housing. Uh, one thing that's a little bit unique about us is that we don't have dorms, um, but we like to cultivate this experience of like you living on your own uh, rather than, you know, being in a dorm with 27, 30 other people and having an RA, things like that. Uh, we have five different locations. Um, we usually, if you go through student life, we usually help you uh, find the right place for you, find the right room, roommate and, and deal with all your moving in and stuff accordingly. Essentially, it's very, very wouldn't say hand holding, but we're very like in particular about, you know, getting you the right fit and the right place where you want to be. Um, if you don't want to live within our housing under our umbrella, we do work, have a student housing referral service where we work with landlords in our area and help you find an apartment that way. So that's like two different ways we try and navigate that space. As I said, you're a bit ways away. So I would recommend looking into our student housing and, student and, and our housing referral service um, if you're looking to move and apply to PCAP. Uh, moving on, as you can see by this map, we are located generally within uh, driving distance between New York, Philadelphia, and Baltimore. And New York and Pittsburgh are probably the two most further cities away. Um, but those play, our location presents with the, with the opportunity of students to travel to any of these cities on, on a whim or take a weekend trip, things like that. Um, we also have students or teachers, I should say, that frequent trips to Baltimore and Philadelphia, and also not pictured here, Washington, DC. Um, we usually have an all school field trip as well, where we go to um, any of the major cities like New York or Washington, DC, just because of the gallery scene and the art scene there. Um, but as I said before, our location lends itself to just being able to go to any of these major cities and just take a drive or a weekend and be able to get out of the city and go somewhere. And we also like to say that cities are campus. Uh, we're right in the middle of downtown, like literally smack dab in the middle. Um, there's a lot to do. Um, I'm a long, I'm a long Lancaster, Lancaster res resident, lived here all my life. Um, but there is a number of different things to do within the city and it's always growing. Um, picture here is the Fulton Opera House, um, as well as Prince Street Cafe um, that a lot of our artists tend to frequent. If you've never been there, you should definitely check it out. Um, there are also, uh, one thing I did want to mention is that there are a number of different Lancaster public art mural opportunities popping up recently within Lancaster. Um, this is just one of the murals that was painted a couple of years ago, um, but there's a number of different blank canvases and blank walls around the city. Um, if you're looking to get into more mural arts within the fine arts, I do recommend you go that route and just see what um, Lancaster public art has to offer. And then lastly, um, Lancaster Central Market here is kind of a hub for that living experience that I talked about earlier, where you're living on your own, getting your own groceries. Um, a lot of people tend to frequent this place um, from out of town or within town. Um, it's a huge market, local produce, a lot of produce that's not local as well. Um, and it's just an experience when you go in there. Um, also, you have the Lancaster Visitor Center here if you're new to the area and need more information. Um, as I said, the, the if you can see my mouse here, the, the housing is located right to the left of the Lancaster Visitor Center right behind there. So you can just walk right over the Lancaster Central Market, get what you need and go back home. So, and then here's our building. Uh, most people see this facade of lights and everything else when they see pictures of our building, but we do own this other building here. That's the other half of the school. 
Um, but if you ever get a chance, feel free to come down to Lancaster, just check it out, see what you like. Um, and we do have virtual tours as well, if you want to see those as well. So going into foundation year, this is basically the start of your career at PCAD um, going forward. Um, you don't go directly into your major when you get to the school. Um, you usually get this foundation where, where, where you are introduced to a number of different things um, all at once within that foundation year. Um, that contains six studio courses, two communication arts courses, um, as I mentioned before, with speaking and writing about your work, and then your two art history courses as well. Um, but you, all, you might have classes in digital animation and combining photography with that. You also may have classes where you're doing anatomy, things like that, 2D and 3D design. Um, so portraiture on a large scale, uh, intro to photography could be one of your classes, and then uh, classes doing form and composition. Um, but the, like I said, if you're, if you're undecided on what you want to do when you come to the school, um, there's a, that, that year usually weeds out what you want to do and helps you figure out exactly what major you want to go into. If you are already decided on what major you want, um, you get a number of different perspectives, um, <clears throat> excuse me, number of different perspectives from each of the majors in, throughout that full year. So by the time you get to your sophomore year, you're essentially already decided, you've gotten those different things out of the way, you can go right into your major and picking what major you want. So one ex very exciting thing that's coming next year um, are liberal arts focus areas and new uh, minor programs. So we're introducing minors essentially into our, our, six, pro our six majors that we have so far. Um, you can minor in any of these down here. Um, just you can't minor obviously in the major that you're already doing. That would be a little bit redundant. Um, but there are requirements for minor programs and these liberal arts focus areas. Um, but you can take any one of these along with your major, um, and that's that's coming next year, as I said, in fall of 2021. So going into departments and majors. So animation and gaming art is one of our more popular majors um, with the boom in digital animation. Um, and gaming right now, um, you can obviously tell why people would flock to that. Um, but within the animation and gaming art, you'll understand how to, first off, understanding how to do the Adobe suite, um, the full Adobe suite, um, tackling programs like Maya, coding, things like that, um, and understanding how all those programs work. Um, but then getting into your junior year, you'll have to pick one of eight tracks going into that uh, animation game art major. So that track is essentially what you wanna do once you get out of the school and what track you wanna do, like what part you wanna be um, within the animation and game art realm. So one thing we like to debunk when you get to the animation and game art major is that you can't just go in, build your own gaming studio or build your own animation studio. You'll be able to do everything on your own. That's not how it works. Uh, we want our students to understand essentially how, that they're a moving piece in a larger machine and there are a number of different jobs that you can do as an animation and game art major. And that's why we created those eight tracks, the eight track system and understanding that there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, so here, essentially, um, a couple of the tracks are character animation for filming games, uh, character modeling for filming games, environmental and level design, which are two different things, um, and then character and creature design. Um, and like I said, you choose that track um, the beginning of your junior year, and then you work on that track for the next two years in that in the major. Um, also, one thing that's a little bit unique about animation and gaming art, they tend to start their senior projects a year earlier, just to give them a heads up and give them more time to think about what they want to do for the senior project. Um, also, it takes a little bit of time to get those trailers together, those gaming elements together, um, craft all that uh, as well. Um, these are just some examples of uh, concept art for students that the students may tackle. Uh, students will also sculpt their pieces. Um, these are some assets from games that were made in the past. And then we also have character development design. We're usually on a pedestal when scrolling. Um, they usually roll back and forth when animating your characters. And then we have environmental and level design here as like a mock-up uh, before coloring and coding goes into it. So going into fine art, um, we like to think that fine art is more self-guided. Uh, when you go into the major, it's more broad, more open. Um, and you'll explore a number of different medias. You can explore new and traditional medias. You can be a painter um, or you can be a sculptor, essentially things like that. Um, but we like to get students to think outside the box when thinking about fine art, um, not just kind of pigeonholing yourself into, oh, being an, I have to be in a gallery or I have to do such and such to be a fine artist. 
Um, fine arts everywhere, and there's a number of different ways you can interpret what fine art is. Uh, some of the classes you'll take are usually within sculpture, and you get a taste of that um, in 2D design. And if you want to continue that, you can go and do that in the fine art major. If you want to do video work, if you want to do, uh, you know, traditional painting, you can do all that within the fine art major. Uh, one thing that sets the fine art major apart is that they do a lot more critiques. Um, they do a lot of department critiques, individual critiques, um, critiques of the teachers, things like that. Um, they do a lot more of them within that major um, to help understand where you want to go as a student and understanding how the, the faculty can help you get there where you want to go. Um, like I said, we have had students do a number of different things within the fine art major, um, building their, making their own bricks and building old rooms. Um, we've had students go into um, designs as far as like dealing with our identity and, and more traditional mediums. Uh, printmaking is one that you can go into. As I said, we have a printmaking lab, um, more traditional sculpture and uh, more traditional works in watercolor and uh, traditional paints. And then one thing I do like to mention um, is combining kind of, sorry about that, combining social activism and fine art and photography. Uh, this is an example in the town that I live in, Lancaster. Um, Essentially, uh, this project dealt with social activism and understanding our community around us. Um, we tent, we set up a tent um, for this project, me and my wife here. Um, we combine my fine art skills and her, photo her, uh, her, my photography skills and her fine art skills. Um, we combine the two to create this mural about our community and what the community means to the people in these photographs. So that's just another way we like to get our students to think outside the box about fine art and how you can go forward and just do it. You know. So think graphic design, uh, I like to think graphic design is in everything. Um, is when you think about it, you think about the brands that you see every day, um, marketing, things like that, web design and how people experience things around them through graphic design. Um, in the first couple of weeks, um, once you're in the major and uh, sophomore year, you'll learn about user experience and user design. And that'll kind of ground you in the base of what graphic design is. You'll get classes in the intro to graphic design, the history of graphic design, um, and then you'll get into more advanced web design once you get into your junior and senior year and understanding how you want to go about being a graphic designer and what type of graphic design you want to go into. Um, we've had students go into ensuring race and gender equality campaigns for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and that you go into that whole aspect of how to code for different platforms and make sure everything looks consistent throughout those platforms. Um, we've had students do packaging. Um, this is one of the projects that students usually work on, uh, packaging and branding, understanding how designs work. Um, we've had students go into poster design for musical events. Um, and Amanda Weir, uh, the graphic designer pictured on the right here, um, actually participated in our graphic design seniors uh, juried showcase for the senior show, uh, where we have six finalists from the graphic design program essentially create um, what the senior show marketing materials will be. And then after that juried, show, or juried um, exhibition, uh, the winner ends up getting their market, marketing materials out into the world for the PCAT senior show. So that's one of the unique opportunities presented within graphic design. Um, they get to design everything for the senior show and then get their work out there on postcards and posters um, and banners and everything else. And then one last thing I wanted to mention, um, we do have another project where students <clears throat> focus on rebranding and already existing brands. So if you take Nike or Vans or a local business that's in Lancaster and we have you completely revamp their branding, um, that just gets you to think about different ways to market and different ways that that group could have marketed themselves and using branding and typography, things like that. So in illustration, um, it's more narrative uh, going into the major. Uh, you have two tracks you can take when you go into the major. Um, but it's not constricted to those two tracks. Um, but most of the time, a lot of people go the more tra classically trained route um, of track. It's more representational, more narrative, more storytelling, um, understanding storyboarding, how your characters move within a space, things like that. But then the contemporary track is more typography. Um, this could kind of go hand in hand with uh, graphic design if you're using more traditional materials, um, and then pattern designs, gift cards, things like that. Um, but a lot of students tend to gravitate more towards the graphic novel elements, comics, um, creating their own characters, character development, things like that when they go into the illustration um, major. And here's some examples. We've had have, had have students go into book design, book cover design. Uh, students combine digital and traditional elements within their work. Um, this is a more traditional piece in colored pencil. And then we've also had students uh, focus on 
uh, advertising and understanding how uh, they, they can use their illustration for ads, um, combining kind of graphic design elements and illustration, as I mentioned before. So last but not least, going into the photography and video major, we provide the students with a base uh, where they go into black and white film photography, uh, where we, pro we provide all the cameras for them if they need them. Um, and then they go into black and white film development, understanding how to do prints, uh, color printing, things like that. And then going into your junior and senior years, you'll get into more advanced techniques dealing with lighting, um, installation, uh, video techniques you can use within your work, uh, things of that nature. And then all culminates in your senior experience where you're more on your own, going out photographing what you want, um, choosing which process you want, digital or film, and then culminating in your senior show, hanging your prints there as well. I mean, we do have, we do have a four by five class. Um, that's an example of one of the pieces. Um, we have students that go to other countries. Uh, this student went to Puerto Rico and documented her family. Um, we have students do, do a simple portraiture. Um, but I did want to mention this piece here with the post-it notes. Um, we, this student decided instead of making still images, he wanted to make an interactive element to his photography and video. So he created um, this camera. Oh, he created this camera where he essentially uh, took the post-it note um, and made about 300 of them. And then whoever walked in front of the camera would have their face replaced with one of these post-it notes he made. So he kind of made it more interactive, um, more collective and, and less of a still image. Um, but it was really, really cool to see and just another way to think about photography and video. And then here's an environmental portrait that was done on the phone. So lastly, with the newest major coming next year, uh, Lime Entertainment and Experience Design, um, to put it in a nutshell, if you think about concerts, um, live shows, football entertainment design, things like that, or, or concerts that you see on live television, it's all those elements or all those little jobs that go into making that show a visual experience for the viewer, um, whether you're on TV or you're, or you're in person. Um, good example is Beyonce's uh, concert on Netflix. You think about all those dancers and all the costumes and all the stage lighting <coughs> and also the environment built around all those people. Those, all those little moving pieces are what live entertainment and experience design is um, and what, what it will be when it comes to fall next year. Um, what I will say is that Lancaster has presented um, this major with a lot of different opportunities coming next year because we do have a lot of concert festivals and a lot of studios around us that also speak to this major and give our students a lot of different opportunities going into live entertainment and experience design. Um, but that's coming fall of next year, as I said, in fall 2021. So if I can convince you to come to PCAD, um, this is how you apply. Um, so firstly, you'll submit an application. There is a $40 uh, uh, waiver or $40 application fee. Um, if you come to op an open house, um, that fee can be waived. Um, we're asking all of our students to submit their portfolio online uh, right now due to circumstances. Um, and that's usually, and I'll get into the portfolio a little bit more um, in our next slide. Um, writing a 250 to 500 word personal statement. Um, that's more of a statement about who you are, why you want to come to the school, um, why you want to do art, et cetera, things like that. And then sending your high school transcripts. Uh, we need two copies of that. Um, if you end up sending a transcript while you're still a senior in high school, um, we'd also need an official copy once you're, once you're out of high school and graduated, it has to have your graduation date and it has to be signed by your counselor. And then this kind of goes hand in hand with the personal statement. We're usually trying, we're strongly suggesting that students schedule an interview with us um, in these times, just because it helps us get to know who you are and more thoroughly than reading, reading it in your personal statement. Um, it just gives us a chance to connect with you on a more personal level and understand why you want to come to the school and why you want to do what you do in the school. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, one little note, I know that FAFSA started back on October 1st, on um, the registration for FAFSA started on October, October 1st. Um, I do encourage any student who's thinking about going to college in general to get started on your FAFSA now. Um, it can be a lengthy process, especially with what's going on right now, um, dealing with circumstances of social distancing and everything else. Um, it can, it might be a little bit lengthier than normal. So um, depending on your situation, I would say get on it right now. And March 1st is that deadline for um, the FAFSA. There's also another uh, deadline for uh, Pennsylvania students, but that's in May. So you guys wouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, but March 1st is the deadline. Uh, please, please, please get your FAFSA done. So onto the portfolio. 
So we require eight to 10 pieces of recent work. Uh, when we say that, it, it usually means within a year of you making it, uh, we need at least two drawings from observation. Those can be still lifes, self-portraits, um, an, an inanimate object in front of you, like a phone or something, anything else like that, as long as it's drawn as you're seeing it in front of you. Uh, if you're doing any sculptures or doing, have larger pieces with pictures um, or paintings, things like that, I want to make sure your pictures are all well lit um, nicely and to very clear so you can see them. Um, and then uh, do you show up your ideas, skills, and abilities? Uh, we want to see what you're doing, um, not what others have done. So essentially, don't copy, obviously, um, but put a lot of your work into your portfolio. Um, and, you, and if you have, you know, things from high school that you kind of show that you, you're branching out and trying new things, that's fine as well. But essentially, we want to see what you're doing um, in your own work. In your own work. Um, and then showcasing equal amounts of depth, breadth and depth. Um, what we mean by that is having a variety of media. So you want to have a variety of media, not only within your subject matter, but also within your mediums that you're using. So if you like to draw in pen a lot of times or like to do charcoal drawings a lot of times, try and challenge yourself to get outside your comfort zone, use a number of different medias you haven't tried before, and also just try and draw things that you never tried to draw before. Uh, just, we want to see that you're comfortable going into that foundation year, um, understand that you'll be tackling with a lot of different things from a lot of different, different majors. Um, we just don't want you to fail in, in that aspect of it. Um, and then there's the order, these last two points kind of go hand in hand. Uh, does the order of your art and portfolio make sense? Um, and are you able to talk about your work? Um, if your portfolio doesn't make sense in any kind of order, you won't essentially be able to talk about your work. And as it says in the bottom, preparation and presentation matter. Um, so we want you to be prepared about your work, um, understand what you're, work, what you're talking about when you're, when you're showing us your work. Um, we just want you to you know, be able to talk about it. So last couple, last couple of slides. Um, we do have uh, awards and scholarships. Uh, the President, President's Promising Artist Award is one of them. And then our Fund Portfolio Merit Scholarship competition that happens um, every May or so, so somewhere on there. Um, but every student that applies is, is uh, able to go for this scholarship here in the Portfolio Merit Scholarship uh, competition. In order, for, like I'll repeat it again, in order for you to be able to participate in the Portfolio Merit Scholarship competition, you have to have applied to the school. So. If you're not interested in any of those other ones, uh, we do have a scholarship search engine on our website at this little link here at pcat.edu slash financial aid. Um, and we do take outside scholarships. So if you go into that search engine, that'll help you find scholarships that are applicable to us. And then last couple of things, uh, we do have a number of different events coming up, um, including this one that's on our calendar right now. Um, and we also have a couple of events. Uh, we also have events coming up over the next couple of weeks into, into December. Um, and we also have information sessions dealing with a counselor and a current student. If you're interested in those, you can go on there and register. Um, most recently, we have, we have open houses as well. Our most recent one is coming up this Saturday on November 7th, if you want to come to that. Um, and if you'd like any more information, there's a link here um, that you'll fill out a little inquiry form. Um, that will take your name, email address, um, just basic information. Um, we won't spam you. Um, it's more of a, for us to keep track of who is interested in the school. And if you do end up applying, we have your information on hand so we know who you are. All right, lastly, um, here's our social media links at the bottom here. Um, they're all PCAD um, in some fat, PCAD.edu in some fashion. If you want to check those out, uh, my email is oori at PCAD.edu. Um, if you'd like to reach out to me. Um, also, the other email that's not listed here is admissions at PCAD.edu. If you want to get in touch with the whole admissions team and figure out who your counselors or who you need to talk to. Um, also, um, PCAD.edu supplies more information. If you're looking for more information about the majors, how we handle financial aid, things like that, you can go to our website there. Um, but overall, thank you guys for joining us and I appreciate your time. All right, Osmond, fantastic job. I think I wanna move to Lancaster and I'm not very good at art. So if there are lots of great people there that can teach me how to be better at art, it sounds like it might be a great plan. <laughs> 
Great. Well, fantastic job. Again, uh, just as a reminder for our participants today, we do have this recorded, and so it will be sitting on the OACAC.org website. That is a way for you to be able to review this content again, be able to see the contact information that Osman has provided, and be able to connect with the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. So thanks for your time this afternoon. We appreciate you hopping on the computer because I'm sure you're doing a lot of that now, um, but it is, is great to be able to share this content and information and have a great afternoon. Thank, Thank you. you.